Once you've got root gaming going on, though, yeah, things become oh, weird and annoying. You get like a double root early. No, really bottom cool. lane, it looks like they're going to be jumping in on uh, our Bristleback forever. Has been left alone. The Wiz is only just now going to come in, but it's too late. MMY is able to secure the first blood. Apparently, Febby felt like he was going to be okay to, to the ancient stack. This time, though, he does manage to get the pull. A little bit late to that, but I think Febby does know the, the existence of the sentry. But maybe doesn't have a creep wave. Push into the jungle briefly, but DDC looks like he's going to connect this pull, no problem. QO having some issues, MMY and Siler, they're going to be able to get a block off here with the Fisher as well. QO is most guaranteed dead, as he has no way to be able to get out of that one. Nice early aggression here from this Earth Spirit. Bring down that Invoker, but unfortunately, yeah. unable to. It's QO. You still have a free farming driver now, though. MVP Phoenix. Oh, the jump in once again. QO is going to be caught out. The tornado gives him a bit of space here. They are going to try and chase this down. If they get the root at the last second, that is perfect. Exactly what they needed. Juggernaut's going to TP in, and I believe he does have his level 6. The scare back there from Siler. Dubu is still going to be able to keep up, though. The fairy fire keeps him alive, and an uphill miss as well. Really unfortunate as they do manage to get the full healing salve out. And Siler will actually be able to stay in lane. In fact, he'll get some free damage on MP as well. Takes out the healing ward. MP already down to half health. Yeah. And this uh, QO and Dubu run into DDC. They will be able to scout him out. Looks like they got a little nasal goon. The tornado does hit. DDC should be falling here as I don't think uh, LGD really has any appropriate response. Just run down by the three members of MVP and that'll be it. Available. There's no way that they expected this to happen anyways. They got the Savage War on the bear though. Advantage. Can yeah, he just walk the roar in? in position. He's going to be able to roar and stop a little bit, but somebody click the Aegis. Aegis, Aegis, he's right on top of it. He can't pick it up. Oh, Febby's forced <laughs> to grab it out of everybody. Oh, my God. RTK, he's actually going to be slowed down by a little bit of goo. Turns around, faking out the Fisher. Not quite hitting it. Nice tornado EMP, though, landed by Kiwo. That all but assures there's no opportunity for LGD to do anything here. Yeah, this is so awkward. This is like the hero that you least wanted the Aegis on. <laughs> I think even, like... I guess he's okay, but once he's out of bottle charges, you're just kind of a ball of light. You would have really liked to see it on one of your cores that could play aggressively. It's a really good maneuver. Kicked up. Are they actually going to be able to commit to this when they jump in with MMY? The damage from the Visage isn't nearly enough, and now MMY is too far forward. Blocked out by the Fisher, laid down by his teammate RTK. And that's a free kill for MVP. This is a Quasuex Invoker. Got to keep in mind that it's rather tanking. The Tornado MP coming out once again. LGD just can't seem to get a hold on this Invoker as once again he's going to be able to turn it around. Maybe he's forced to pop that Enrage and run himself away. Yeah, but it's Roshan. You're kind of just forced into this position though. At some point you know you have to give up that tier 1 tower bottom. What matters more is giving up the uh, power mid tier. Rapid rotation around there. Going to be able to catch ROTK out of bounds. He's completely out of mana. 3-3 three to three now. The score may be even, but MVP is certainly far ahead in this match. Like the objective, mm -hmm. but LGD Dyer's overall had a pretty easy attack. time with things. Like last game was, you told me True. 15 minutes of the game. Oh, but they're about to lose their top net worth hero. They do have the relocate in as well, so there's no way that Tyler can get out of this one. Oh, they do manage to kill the jug though. That's a really big pickup. Take perhaps some of these smaller jungle camps, but. Like no one, no one even feels comfortable showing themselves in bottom lane. Right now, yeah. the Earth is just kind of wandering around. I'd really like them to not give up this tier one mid. I don't think, even with the Radiance coming up, I, I think you have to at least make some effort at contesting it. MMY, balls on in, is a little bit short. They don't have their Earth safe here just yet. He's making his way across from the jungle anyway, so... They can make a commitment Radiant soon. Radiant yeah, they're gonna are pop the cliff. They, they, they should just go while Forev is up at that top lane. Actually going to be able to catch QO, leading where the Fisher is done. Nice swap back out, though. Dubu may be blown up, but he managed to protect QO, and that's hugely important. Now the relocate in from behind is going to be able to catch multiple heroes. RTK is going to be the first one down. DDC actually summoned some new familiars, so he should be okay. Able to cover his retreat with a potential stun, but this just means MVP Phoenix. They win the fight, and they'll go right back to taking that Tier 1 
at the mid lane. I like this rotation from LGD, though. They know how desperately they need to be able to track down MVP. They get Febby, so they're going to turn towards Forever. Unfortunately, they're missing out on Disables here, as they can't quite keep up with Bear. The Tornado comes in. It's on to EMP will go off, but I think they're just going to try and go for the Spirit Bear and call it a day. Forev, oh, here comes maybe though. He's apparently okay with this. MMY is going to be able to address Q well when Forev, he's actually battling it out with Yursa right now, but this is not a battle he can actually win. Forev will eventually go down. The mech's keeping him alive. Maybe. Oh, he actually does die. They kick on through. Fisher onto Q well. They're controlling up the Invoker, but Siler's almost dead. MMY's trapped oh, up against MP. There's just no way out here for LGD as they run down hero after hero. Three down. DDC hit by the tornado as well. There's going to be a fourth down double kill for QL. And it looks like Dubu, he might even find ROTK. No, he doesn't get the swap off. ROTK has to be so frustrated at himself. He blocks himself from being in. And it's one of the heroes that gets the most benefit out of levels anyway. So yeah, exactly. you could speed that along. It's all good. Show themselves at bottom lane. The relocate comes out. Siler doesn't have any way out of this one. He does have the roar still up, but he's just trying to run it. Does manage to scare back Q well, but the rest of MVP will still be able to run him down. LGD on the other side, though, are I going to try and fight this one? Nice block out there from Forev actually absorbs that rolling boulder and will be able to fight the rest of the team. RTK throws down the epicenter, but it's only just before he dies. MP is chased back with a spin, but Forev is going to be able to continue on the front line, slowly but surely tickling these heroes down with Wills. will be another four down from LGD. LGD as MVP are just stomping through this game too. Yeah, now we can say they're like the C point there in the tournament, and they really took it to them. But when it came to team fights, they're just getting flat out the ball. Kick comes in, Perez. Not quite blocked out. Maybe, maybe it's gonna have to enrage, but they may not even be able to save him. MP does get rooted up, but Perez gonna be able to keep on going. A scare back there. Maybe he's going to be taken lower and lower from the urn. And they do end up taking him out with Bevy. Spirits. Green Man Fisher. RTK still does not have that Echo Slam, though. So not much he can really do, though. Huo locked in by the roots, but a will turn and fight. He's okay with this one. So maybe buyback, but Silar doesn't have bear for the next 82 seconds. It's going to be a, a guaranteed Rax. Invoker Dagon. Okay. All right. That's the get out of it game <laughs> item. He's ready to just zap down some heroes. QO is, he's feeling himself right now. He's like so happy. I'm doing QO things, can't stop me. I'm gonna build a Dagon with my 3200 gold. That's the top six Dagon right there. Yeah. I like that, those moves. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the subtle, this is how far behind you are. <laughs> Demoralize the enemy as fast as possible. Siler, not expecting yeah, Kuo to still be inside right the base, but he's definitely here. And he's got the Dagon too. MP will finally catch up. The spin to win will take out Siler. Dubu takes a large amount of damage, and that heals him right back up. So they throw down the swap, catching up to DDC. Take him out. Du Dubu still completely fine. Sitting right next to the fountain, he's okay. LGD just have no reprisal whatsoever. Under Imagine if they did this, if they had done this Dyer's four or five minutes tower ago. Has said, fallen. Let's wait for Sadler's radiance, no matter what. And we'll see what we can do. But I think at this MMY point... MMY is going to jump in. They're going to try and pop Febby, but he's already got a Ghost Scepter of all the items. MMY is going to lose all his mana and his life. The Dagon comes out. RTK turns around for the Fisher and does manage to get away. For the time being, Forever's gonna be able to chase him down eventually. He comes in with the extra bit of health. Omni Slash bouncing around. Two very tanky heroes are gonna be able to absorb the Omni Slash. That's why we were talking about how they can just tank Juggernaut, but we really got the opportunity until now. Spare Bear's gonna die in secondary time. Maybe tries to jump onto Kiwo, but there's just too many counterplay mechanisms here for MVP. Four staffs and both scepters all around. DDC is actually gonna be almost dying to Febby straight up. MVP is just enjoying themselves right now, Radiant just driving non-stop. They've got fallen. a full AC completed on for F2. They've secured themselves. MMY kick in. He doesn't actually dress for Rev. Immediately give him a stand. Spear Bear also going to die for a secondary time here. 8 to 21, make it 22. Tyler goes down yet again. Maybe finally picks up a kill. Oh, the there we go. An echo out from ROTK. Maybe, just maybe, LGD can push MVP out of the base, but there's still the two cores. Got both the Juggernaut and that Bristleback is looking quite healthy. Maybe he's going to try and go for the Juggernaut. Oh, he's going to be able to burst it before the TP out as well. Can they control Forev? No, there's just no way. There's too many quills. Maybe he's going to actually try for it here. He still has the Aegis, though. I don't think they should try and fight this one at all. This is just a, a Bristleback who is too much to handle at this point in time. MMY tries to slow him down. Forev. 
to dodge it. Won't be able to dodge the Fissure though. A little bit more control. And it looks like he will finally be losing that age. It's the one. Keeps him alive a little bit longer. Max efficiency with the trend switching as well. LGD are committing so much time to try and stop just the second life of the Bristleback. And they can't even do that much. You said, Cap? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Can't even do it. Febby's finally safe? here with a relocate save. 12 to 22. Vid boosters. <laughs> <laughs> What's going but on? But they can't address the Ghost Scepter. They, they can't address that one item. I'm not sure about the, the imagine if three Febby's, orbs. Imagine if Febby just They're going to jump on. Dubu, kick. That's a good kick, actually, on it, too. But unfortunately, the tornado is going to be pretty uh, disrupted. They do manage to get a three man fissure, swap back out. But Dubu still dies as the kick comes in. MMY still going to be able to control these heroes with Echo Slam over the top on it, too. Febby's not your trying target. to go on to Febby, but my god, he's going to be able to complete the relocate out, leaving for Ev here. Because we know the Bristlebacks are always going to keep on living. Nobody what checked his hell? items. Yeah, no, 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 it's just like, like it's a ghost scepter, guys. I can defuse a little off. It's all good. Radiant structures are fortified. Not the case here at all. Febby comes right back to the fight. And the last lane of Rax is going to be going down here unless LGD can pull out a miracle. Radiant's top tower is RTK tries to jump from Febby here. Febby's so fine, though. Four staff back inside the base, trying to juke his way around, but maybe still dealing with Kubo. Oh, the enrage goes off just before the dagon hits. And RTK is going to be run down by MP. Sailor Axe, Rain Trax is all that's left. And LGD probably knew it was over for a while now, but they just to fight it out to the bitter end. I think this loss is going to hurt Victory. almost more than the first one, just because they had certain advantages going into this. They just got outmaneuvered around the map. That first rush was so well done by MVP, and it took away a lot of LGD's uh, lineup momentum. Yeah, it wasn't just about the aggression, but the, the way they utilized some of their